part of the job. Okay. That was an NDC. That's what okay. It's six thirty. I call this meeting to order of the Town of East Windsor Building Commission. We are located at the Town Hall John Daly Meeting Room, and we are also live via Zoom. Attendance: We have eight regular members. Right, correct. Um, approval of minutes. Does anybody have any edits, corrections? Anything? Got a word? Everything look good. I think. I think the vote, Steve. Oh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I forgot all about this. Um, I don't even remember what the thing was. I voted yes. I think on something, but it registered as no. It was for the architects, I think. Yeah, yeah. I thought you had voted no. Oh, no, I, that's right. Oh, oh Noria. No. Voted no. He voted no. So we'll have to fix yep. that. Thanks for bringing that up, Heather. Right? We, uh... You are welcome. Okay, that being said, I'll entertain a motion for approval minutes. Make a motion to approve Approve the minutes dated September 23rd, the amended uh, info. Second. Motion made by Dave. Is there a second? Yeah, I did. Well, let, me go, let me go through the procedure first, Dick, before you second it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> second by Dick. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next. We'll do uh, unfinished business, discussion of school projects to include Joe Sauerhofer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down, you know, one of these at a time because there's a few of them here. So we'll start off uh, with the school project first. So right now we're at a standstill with the school project as far as the roof and the HVAC. We're still in, they're still deciding they have a demographic study done. They're working on, their subcommittee's working on proposals to the selectmen. So there's really, I really know school updates as far as projects that we're, we're assisting them with. Okay. Any questions? Good. Okay. On to letter B, update town projects to include Joe Sauerhofer. Well, the two projects that we are, are E and F. Um, so, we can jump down to there. We get down there. Okay. If you want to continue to go in order. Okay. Okay. It's going to be uh, C. It's going to be update discussion of the community center project. Okay. Well, um, we got some change orders. I got Len and Geo Jay, Len and Jimmy to finish approve them today. Handed them out just now. There are some credits in that change orders. Um, other than that, we're on schedule. We passed our rough electrical. Our plumbing rough to be at the end of this week. <clears throat> HVAC, HVE, HV, AC. Yeah. AC. Our, our, um, they're up. We're waiting to do the gas. The generator pad is just about ready to pour. Uh, sheetrock and insulation, once the roof has been sealed in, one of those change orders is uh, the pitch on the roof that they're, we're going to get it all, the roof all. Done this week. That's what they. That's what they're telling me. So the roof, and then the sheetrock installation will start going up. Okay. It looks really nice. It. It. The, the studs are all up. Obviously, the electrical's in. All the cat. Uh, six cables been run. Uh, but it definitely you can see that it's not a big shell anymore. The, the walls are up. The door. You know, you can see the doorways. The doors have been cut through where they took the windows out for the. The divider wall for the um, partition. Um, it it's definitely coming along. So I went to the last meeting there. I took a walk through the property, and it makes that big room look small now. I don't know if you've been in there or not, but it looks it looks pretty good. Anyway, any questions for Joe about yes. this? Uh, I asked you for a timeline. Or yes, and what did they give you? But it, it is the uh, builder wanted to update it and he promised it to me Friday and he never sent it to me this morning. So, so I get it. I will follow up with him in the morning. He was out of town until this afternoon, the, the project manager. 
Would you be able to email it to us if you? I will. As soon as I get it, I will send it out. I will. I will make sure I send it out tomorrow. As soon as I will force him to give it to me. Well, pressure. I can't. What's the current timeline? Well, what's it? The May is a completion. May. May 6th is our completion date. Uh, they they believe they're pretty much on schedule. Um, Water line's going to start on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. So water is the next big hurdle. So you don't anticipate the May 6th date to change? Mm -hmm. uh, after, after that, in their document, they have to pay penalties us until the date of completion. Okay. So, anybody else anything for Joe? If I wanted to visit the site, are there hours of operation? I mean, the guys working like seven to three or something like that. Or if I wanted to, see um, how it looks. I'm not quite sure. I can check. Mm -hmm. I I don't. They basically own the building right now. They don't own the building, but they own the rights to allow anybody in. They're not really. I I asked if we could have our meeting there, but there's no cameras there, and there's no heat right at the moment. The only one heater that the existing heater they've got the gas kicked off. Um, I never really got an answer if they if they don't really want us in there, yeah. so to speak, because of liability. But I will ask. I mean, it, I will. Yeah, if you could, and and do we need uh, like hard hats, goggles, oh, yeah, special yeah, shoes, yeah. all that? They, they, not, they test, we have those at the trailer. Yeah, well, I have. All yeah, that I'd stuff. like to join. A, a, like yeah. to be able to. Be nice to, to see the progress. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's safe to. Get I don't know. There. I don't know if we can do it as a group. I, I understand the liability. But yeah. Oh yeah. I will. I will clarify with them and find out. I mean, I don't see why you can't. Yes. You know, it's not like. We're allowing the public to go in, but I don't yeah. see why. So it's nice for us to get our eyes on it. Yeah, I, and I, I don't know if we could do it like as a group, just so it might be a <clears throat> more controlled environment, right. if you would, like after be whenever the they leave or towards the end of the day. It might be the safest way. story. Yeah, really. No. This way, nobody's getting in the way, and we're just in and out. I mean, probably. I will find out. Yeah, that'd be cool. You do it at a lunchtime. Both of us got our own hard hat. Yeah, it looks totally different when you, no, you walk in there. That's for sure. We have some extra hard hats at the garage. So I can bring. So I'm just looking at um, some of the change orders that you had given us. And um, the backup is in direct and few of these. They just don't match what the totals are. Um, can you just? Have somebody you look at that and I can email them out. I would just uh, absolutely. That's, like I said, we just signed them today, so it was a quick throw together so I could give them to you. And I will uh, follow up. Okay. And all of these changers are just things that through the course of construction, yes. it wasn't planned thing. It wasn't something that anybody missed. It was just. The only add on on those change orders is the, the door that you guys approved last meeting. Yep. Everything else is um, the oversizing of the gas pipe to run all the units because we want to step it up to two PSI and we need a two inch line to go to the roof to do that regulators to supply up there mm -hmm. because the line that was up there for the run of two units isn't they don't feel it's big enough to supply all five okay so they want to upgrade it now uh, the only you don't have the plumbing one there because the plumber and i are still working on trying to clean up some of the existing because there's a lot of i think stuff that was added on in the years that it was open and there's a lot of T's and bends and so it, now's the time to clean it up. I, I hear you. Budgetary wise, we're fine with that. So let's get it right once and we're not chasing it. Okay. And then the roof modifications, um, can you just talk to that and so why that wasn't the addition? Well, the existing. addition is higher than the existing roof. Yeah. The roof pitches and it's not the big. The big area, we'll, we'll say the, the meeting area, it's the lower area. Mm -hmm. So the roof pitches out this way. Well, our new addition is 18 inches higher. Mm -hmm. So 
originally they I put a scupper in there to catch the water and then push it to the front corner. It's not going to work. It's going to be a maintenance nightmare. So what we want to do is take insulation, build the roof up from the big room out, pitch all the water. So as the water comes down off of our addition, the what comes this way will hit that pitched roof and then pitch out and then hit the gutters. So we're basically taking half of that front section and it's, it's and building it up and putting rubber on top of it. Okay. And they got to now we got to cut the big part of the building, flash it all in, and then but to do it this way, we thought we could pull the existing roof off, but there's no decking. They just put the roof to the yeah. So it's better just to leave that basically as our decking, and we're going to build on top of that. Okay. Long term, is there if we're using the existing roof for the decking, is that long term? Do you? Well, it'll be all encapsulated and closed in now. We don't foresee there being no. any kind of issue. Okay. We keep on the roof on top of the roof. And it it is a plus because that is exactly where that HVAC unit that we're having. We had to put a new curb in there because the new unit was downsized. So the curb stop was and the duct work, all that had to be changed. So all those penetrations are going to get covered by this new roof. Okay. So it'll actually tighten us up if we can find a couple leaks from that old duct work. Okay. And this partition wall, that's what we approved. That's what you guys approved last time. Did we know it was 77,000? <laughs> okay. I don't recall that. Okay. That's fine. I mean, it, I, that I we had to do, so. Well, if you add all the fees and stuff in that one, <laughs> 10, 10. The generator's still on the roof. Are uh, we on budget on the whole thing, Joe? Good. Still running within yeah. budget. We're within um, Good. Good. the the partition wall was part of the FFP. Yep. So we're we're in good shape still. We're nothing to worry about, and we're seven months from completion. Once we get through the plumbing, you know, I mean, we're I mean we're we're drywalling and sheetrocking. What's going to come up for a change order there? We're <laughs> so we're not anticipating much much in the way of change orders moving forward. No, once well, we got one more plumbing one. That'll be I don't I don't know where it'll be, but it'll be significant because we're gonna cut a lot of the old stuff out. It just makes sense to do it now. So the change order amount is that coming out of the contingency that the town has? Because just because I'm looking at I mean, where we are right now with that, and I know what our bid was, so obviously it's got to come from someplace. I know that we, I just, like, where's that money coming from? <laughs> um, overall, and and they had to break it down for the USDA, yep. you know, itemize yeah. as they wanted. So overall, we have 4.72 million. Right. Yeah, so um, how, it, how it equates out, as long as we stay within that, Dollar amount, USDA says this is how much you're spending, and they're there. They were just there for the. And then I don't think we got another payout. Okay, but we're running. They're running way behind on their billing and everything, which is fine with me. But <laughs> you know, it's um, but we're financially we're fine. Okay, and Amy's right on top, of watching it. In I, I mean, I wouldn't suggest anything otherwise, but I just know that it's questioned. So I just am trying yeah, to. No. You just it's, say where where it would be coming from. So those line items that you're talking about with the USDA, those are flexible numbers. Yeah, so it's not not, complete. they're not like yes. I I believe one of those line items was attorney fees. Well, there are not going to be any attorney fees. Okay, but I mean we don't need the attorney to close anything out. We've okay. had a little bit with the architect passing it on. Yeah. Um, the FF and E number that door is part of that FF and E number. Okay. Um, Which, I mean, the change orders would have to be from that as well because the contractors. Yeah, the contractor doesn't number. care about our schedule. They want to get paid. Yeah. They just yeah, don't care, they they don't care where it comes from. Value, not our okay. schedule value. Okay. The generator. What, what, where are you at with that? The generator? There's two generators. Um, the WPCA has a generator. And, yeah, I don't I don't know where we stand with the WPCA generator. All I know is our generator that we're installing 
is big enough to run the pump station and operate the community center as a shelter. So I don't know what's going on with the second generator. We were, uh, we asked to move it, it's out of our way now. So it, it's on property, but it's just out of our way. So I don't quite know. I know Jason's working with the WPCA in that anyways. Good. Okay. Good. All right, moving on to D, designate building commission member as a representative to the school facility subcommittee. Okay, so um, you're all fully aware of what the school and what the town's, well, basically the school right now is, is looking to do either a new, new schools or remodel or renovate the existing schools to try to decide are we going to consolidate the school? So they've got a subcommittee. The consultant are all working on this. And we had a meeting, a, a meeting with the consultant last last week. And it was my suggestion that this board nominates or appoints somebody to be part of that, somebody from the building committee to be part of that, the school board. I don't know, what do they call themselves? Subcommittee. Liaison. The, the, the liaison. Liaison. Sub. Uh, the facility subcommittee. <clears throat> so I, I recommended that that's the way it needs to be. That person can go to those meetings and then bring an update back um, and ultimately be part of that whole project because they're still trying to figure out what they want. They don't know exactly what they want. And then ultimately... They want to propose it to the community, and then the community ultimately votes how how they're going to vote, how they do all that. That's way beyond my scope of uh, expertise. So they agreed with me. So I think if somebody wants to, the board wants to appoint somebody to be part of their group, I think that would be very helpful for this group. Does anybody want to volunteer? I'd like to ask more questions. Yeah. And I really wish Denise was here to answer more questions. Um, is this a liaison position or is this a seat at the table? Liaison. I would say liaison. We've had subcommittees before for this commission. Just so when we say liaison, it's like when Sarah's here tonight, kind of. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. But I think, though, that it's more of a working kind of group, though. Because yeah. Sarah is at the table well, right now and that. No, she doesn't vote. The first of all, when you're at a subcommittee, you don't vote. We don't vote as a board of ed. Like we don't vote in our subcommittees. You can't do that until you're in your actual board. So there wouldn't be any voting that's done. Okay. But what it is is we're bringing in the consultant. And the consultant's going to start telling us what the next steps are. And the um, also the talk was to have someone from here, but then also someone from like a parent representative as well. So Patrick's starting to figure out what what way to go out about doing that. So I I got one of the people who were on the subcommittee stepped down. So now I'm on that subcommittee. So although it would be an easy, I think at some point it would be a conflict. So I think it should be a different person. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I mean, you have a, you know you you have a talk at the table. You're not just going to sit and, and just watch. Your input is valuable. That's why I would like Denise here because I've been on this for about three to four months now, and I kind of wanted to know where they're at exactly right now. What's well, been it's, proposed it's, to the Patrick and Jason? Yeah, yeah. not Denise. Not Denise. Yeah. So one of makes me feel so one of your board needs to be put on that. Mm -hmm. So since you know a little bit more about it, it's it's. They're not voting. It's kind of like us. We're recommending to mm -hmm. the Board of Education. Well, it's different than that because okay. we can vote on this board. We're just not voting. I mean, community voting for side. recommendation. Yeah. Like we we can vote as a group because we're together. But in a subcommittee, whether it's uh, the facilities or curriculum or policy or finance, any of those subcommittees that the Board of Ed has, we do not vote in them. Okay. We bring it to the board and then the board votes. So, so any decision that would be made in this facilities would be brought to the board and the board would vote. So basically your eyes and the ears and boots on the ground, you bring the information back to us. 
can help I you discuss. I promise that it will lead to something else, but I would say, given that you wanted to get more involved in it, it would give you the ability to be um, a voice. So I, I don't, I mean, but if it doesn't fit your needs, then, or what you want, then. Is it more than one person or is it only one person? Just one. One person from this board, one person from the public, the school, and the the whole the whole theory about this is is for that committee to come up with the best recommendation. Is it an advisory position or is it more of a? Well, it's a talking workshop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's I've cool. been on with, some of those with, with the board of Ed. scenario with the board of selectmen that will be presented to the community. This is what we've come down, or these are the choices. You know, these are the three choices that. We feel this is why the, the consultants already had Ed's, you know, we have to draw up Ed specs. You have to come up with renderings. Uh, we got to put an RFQ out for an architect. All this stuff. This is this is how the project should start. It shows transparency. And, and then once it starts, then it's like the RFQ for the architect and whatever. They're, they're still trying to figure out exactly what avenue. That RFQ starts here. So what I'll do is we'll put an RFQ out, we'll get the information back, and then it starts with you guys, and then ultimately goes to the Board of Selectmen to approve the contract, and then All the time. we start. And then, no, we start with the renderings, we start with whatever concepts, so then we can show the community this is what we're, this is what we're planning, or these are the options we're planning. And then, you know, it it's it's basically putting the train on the track and running it down the track. And, and that so makes this sense. is for all the schools, the, correct? The, yeah, the, the vote will come from this is for all the schools. Yeah. So it's it's what we're going to do with our schools, renovate them, build new ones. What is going to be the best thing? And and what is the state going to reimburse us? And, and that's what the consultants there for and all that. So two more questions. Yeah. One would be. <clears throat> Last I heard and asked questions, it sounded like they were talking about renovate to new. Where where are we really there? I don't. I haven't gotten a straight answer. So because there isn't a straight answer. Okay, Jeff. fair enough. Um, I think like what we had to do is what we did with the board of selectmen is had them sign and have the consultant come on, and now give us a timeline, of what we need to do and in what order is best to do it, okay. and. You know, whether it is renovate or is it brand new, because those are still pieces that we we as a board, board of ed yeah. um, and the town, we need to talk about because, I, I mean, I don't know what our bonding capacity is. That's another question. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot that needs to be asked and talked about. And um, I think that, you know, it's been known that we need to get more people involved because it's, it's an important process. It's the biggest project. And Joe's right. I mean, this this group is a big driving right. part of that. You guys are going to drive it, but they have to tell you what to drive. So the second part of that, as you said, you're talking about, they're talking about having somebody from the community and somebody from the board. I believe the community don't. Yes. No, that was okay. the discussion <laughs> in the meeting. It was a community member, the selectmen are represented, or the, the <laughs> building commission will be represented, and the board of that is represented. So my opinion there, because I've been kind of on this for a few months and really thought with like 300 plus years of experience here would be super helpful from the beginning. Would it be possible for me to go in as a community member and then grab somebody else here from the building commission? I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to say that's not an option, yeah, but I, I think, don't think that's the yeah, way no. we're going to go down. I think they're looking for somebody in the PTO or the, the booster club, somebody that's going to be able to get the word out to those do not affiliated with anything. Mm -hmm. This just for right now, too. And I, this, I don't think this was meant to be a critical conversation. It was just there needs to be somebody representing this group at the table. So when did the meeting take think place? It be me, so. No, I, I, I think it's sure. kind of a okay. conversation, though. That's the thing. It's yeah, the yeah. first Wednesday of every month at 530 or 6. Beginning of December, I think. December, first week of December, I think. It's it's real. <laughs> because we were waiting last night, knew because we were waiting to find out about the consultant. Yeah, yeah. exactly the, about that. Yeah. Like my hire consultant. Yeah, and I think the first week in November. I don't know if it's the day after. 
voting. I don't know the reason why we're doing the first week in November. Whatever it is, we can. What, sir? Um, so I just to kind of, there might be a little confusion, but I'm not a Board of Education member, and this is a Board of Education subcommittee. So I go to them as more of a liaison to the Board of Selectmen, but I don't. The chairperson and they run the meeting mm -hmm. and I don't always get to contribute because I'm not a board of education member. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're changing the structure of that by adding a building member mm -hmm. or if they're going to be like me where we kind of have to sit back and take it all in and then report back to the I, board. I is, think it's supposed to, and correct me because I wasn't at your meeting, but I think it's supposed to be that that meeting is supposed to be about this pro this project Only. not about like our regular facilities because that is as that is what this subcommittee is mm -hmm. but i do think that it's supposed to be a more engaging process yeah, now that we've got the consultant they'll, they'll have you'll have input it's yeah. are we 100 percent sure of that because we think and we're sure and it, sorry it's just important to me i'm not i got kids i got stuff going on it's important to me but if i'm just sitting there and have nothing to say or it's not listened to and i'm kind of just liaison on it super interested but at the same time again I, I get what we're saying with a community member from the booster cover pto but we're talking building buildings well we can get the word out there by facebook and all kinds of people i just think it would be really if, if you're interested you go on now and once you go to the first meeting if you want to be the not part of the building committee and be then that could be a good discussion for you with patrick because and then we, I'm sure we could get another volunteer. Are these public meetings mm -hmm. when they happen? Mm -hmm. Yep. So anybody they'll be posted can, somewhere? Can, yep. Yeah, anybody can go. Anybody can come. We just, Absolutely. this committee, and I apologize, we say we, needs a representative on that committee. And, and again, Jeff, it doesn't have to be you. It can be That's right. Mike yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick or anybody else. I just wanted Campaign. volunteer i've asked a few questions before and haven't gotten information and came to the board of select with a few things and questions were asked and it kind of turned into like the political answer with no real answer we so, didn't have an answer we had to wait for this piece that now we have no my my questions were pretty specific and no we didn't have specific answers there was timelines that were told there were timelines but couldn't give what the timelines were any specifics on these timelines it's like it was it was pretty well thought out questions and it also came from the board of selectmen too and i feel like it was very vague that's why i'm saying it, it'd be nice to just have all the information from the chairperson who's kind of running it kind of knows. that's all well it's just want to be a little thorough with stuff it's, it's it's all the and the first selectman saying there needs to be a representative yeah on so okay. we need a representative from the building committee and then where more from there is i don't know i mean i but it's it's the right way to start it. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Ago. Yeah. The consultants on board and saying you need to do these are the steps you need to do next. Okay, you got to decide what you want to do, and then put it to the community, and then get the community to say, yeah, that's a great idea, or no, I want I want A, I don't want B, and then from there, then it comes back, and then you set you set the architect and get going on the project and the plans and then ultimately have a goal because you're right there are a million questions financing is the question what are you going to do are you going to go new are you and that's what this board is designed to do yeah and then present it to the community so we figure we start with you first since you had start entry you know, interest a few months ago I mean, is anybody else interested first off as well? I mean, I'd really have to see what was going on. I'm kind of that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. Yeah, I'm I'm interested, but I'd like to know more if we're gonna have actually input. You will have input. Well, like I said, you gotta somebody's gonna put boots on the ground someplace. Yeah. So the start if they don't like it, they'll resign. I try a meeting, I'm sure. Can't do it if they have a first. I put in some work. Them. I'd like to give it a shot if it's not. I don't think it would be unprecedented if it doesn't work for you if you came back yep. and said somebody else. You find somebody else. It, it would it be would would nice if two of us could go. That's what I, yeah. I was asking. And then there's, a, there's you, always you're a back. More than welcome to go because it's an open meeting, but the one whoever we nominate will be the person at the table. We don't want to stack the board with anyone. Right. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, they, they, actually, you know, they, it's a problem right. you run into. Well, yeah. You know, like the so person from the general public should be the general public. Yeah, not a with not associated with anything, any board commission or anything mm -hmm. else. Yep. Should be general public. Yeah. Just you end I'm up you end up you end up stacking a committee and slamming it if you don't. And that's the last thing you can do, want to do. So is anybody else interested in being a liaison or liaison to the Sorry, Jeff? I would vote for Jeff. I'd yeah. be interested in it if Jeff didn't want it or you wanted it. But I mean, it sounds like it's going to start out with a lot of, what I call it, with a lot of unknowns and hopefully it'll develop where we could actually a be a, a help. And like you said before, there's probably 700 years of experience here. Right. <laughs> it's also so transparency too, because you, we weren't invited to the party and we're like, okay, what are they doing? What are they doing over there? Yeah. Where I think as time goes on, I mean, you know, I don't know how the board of ed folks feel about us kind of helping out based on, you know, I do this every day. So, I mean, I don't teach every day. Well, maybe. Exactly. In a different form. So, I mean, for us to be part of this, like, watchdog working with Len, working with Joe, and just trying to make sure the town's getting what they're bargained for, I think it would probably be a good, you know, a good start for us. But I don't know if at the very beginning we need to all be on there, where I think, you know, you would be good for that. You already put in the work. But I could see where you're hesitant based on, you know, are we just sitting there listening? Well, yeah. You got nothing to lose until you try. Oh, you're right. And then just comments that were made as well. So, yeah. Sure. So that was. So. Yeah, yeah, no. no. I don't so, know. We got a vote on this? Or that no? being said, I'll make a motion to appoint Jeff. Uh, I'll, I'll, make a motion to I'll make a motion to appoint Jeff as our, uh, Australia's our. Uh, Representative. Yeah. I'll second it. Motion by Dave, second by Dick. All in favor say aye. 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 Here it is. Love. Okay. <laughs> so now we're off to ENF, which is a discussion of the fire department roof project and department of um, uh, roof production department of public works roof project. We got the fire department and we have the public works. We can talk about the bull. Basically, uh, we forwarded off to y'all uh, with the packet where the state, we pulled a contractor off the state bid, and he's a South Windsor business. They bid both projects, which came in both of them under our um, estimate cost. So um, what I need from the board is uh, your approval to put it to the first selectman to or the board of selectmen to vote on and sign the contract. The state contractor follows our bid procedure. And um, this contractor actually, a little background is they've been working on the school roofs and helping the school out. Through Garland, the manufacturer of the roofing product that we're using. Anybody have any questions about the roofs? Yeah. You got snow guards on the one for the firehouse. Yes, okay. Yep. You gutters and snow guards. All right. You know why? You know why? I was involved in that. I know the the um, bids are like a month old, and I know gas and oil and all that has been dropping. Do we know if that'll affect any of this pricing, or if it's a? Uh, it's a state. It's basically a state contest. So it's a state. It's state, state. Yes. Yeah, guys. Preferred vendors. Yeah. Already set. Already set. Yep. The only thing you could save or, or spend on is materials, really, yeah. right? All metal. Metal roof on bull. Really? No more rubber on those. That was the latest thing when it was done, Joe. <laughs> yes. Joe, I'm not an expert at all. I don't know much about it at all, but... Yeah. Um, Will they, will they take the existing off hurt. and then put the new on? The rubber comes off, insulation goes back down, then and then pull the old insulation out, re-insulate, and then steel decking goes on top of that. Do we anticipate there being any hiccups with it? No. It should be a straightforward. We, yeah, we've maintained the roofs very well where they, you know, had any leaks. The only place we have uh, we have a couple seams of public books that we take care of 
and then the flashing around the chimney. The decking is in. Okay. There is no decking damage because you can see the decking from the attics. Okay. How often does that need repairs on the average? On the uh, metal roof? No. Oh. The, the one you got right now. The, uh, the every year for that's the last five years, I've had to reseam. Yeah, that's the roof. This the, what happens is where they seam them. It separates. So I've had to pull the tape off, the repair tape off, and put new tape back on. The chimney has been, uh, I've been chasing that for almost 10 years. The flashing on it, it's, so, I don't know if it moves. I think it's the siren, and I'd like to get rid of the siren on there because it makes so much noise. I think it should be the whole room. But it will be coming down in the intern because we need to get it off the roof. Put the metal on it. the whole building. Huh? It shakes the whole building. It does thing. shake the whole building. Yeah, I'm sure. And five horses. I was up there once and it went off. Oh. <laughs> it's loud. Thank you. It's, it's, ob it's obsolete, really. The way it stands. Yes. Okay. Public works, we have where uh, there's a big scene where there was an addition put on the last two bays, and that scene is, it, 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 <laughs> it's to the point now where we can't really do anything. It's just the building's because they're two different buildings separated a little bit. But we keep it dry enough, and luckily this summer hasn't been that way. This should solve the problem. <laughs> Pray for no rain. <laughs> what are they thinking of doing this work? Huh? What are they thinking of doing this work? Oh, for timeline? It's, oh, yeah. it's uh, probably December. <laughs> after Thanksgiving, a start date. Metal roof, traditionally, they can do it year-round, and they yeah. rather do it now. And the and and all these well, most roofing contractors are coming off all the school projects anyways. Yeah, so it's a little more availability for stuff to do to get them through until school projects start again. Do they do it in phases because of weather, or are they just knock it out? Oh, they just knock it out. Get it or done. They come in and they just knock it. Yeah, so you'd be shocked. It's gonna be no, no. I've seen a, a warm winter. <laughs> it was warm last year. You need to stick your coats on for. A so we're gonna need a motion to. To um, send it off the board of selectmen to sign the contract, you would want to do them separately. They're, they're, I think the money was appropriated as a roof project. Okay. For both bills, so. so so I'll entertain a motion to send the uh, fire department roof and the uh, DPW roof off the board of selectmen to sign the contract. You want to? Anyone to make a motion? Almost, since you already dictated. <laughs> I need a motion. I can't make the motion. Well, you kind of. Okay, make a motion that we uh, send to the Board of Selectmen the recommendations that they sign the contract for the Broadbrook Fire Department roof repair and also the Public Works Department repair. I'll second. Motion made by Dick, second by David. Or Mike, who takes second? It? Mike. Second by Mike. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, okay. I'll let you know when we start. Yep. Okay. That's it for you, Joe, right? No, that's it for me. That's it. Financial? None? Okay, that's I don't have any money anyways. <laughs> Topics from the floor? Anybody have anything that they want to discuss? Two weeks. No, I know. No, I know. I'm talking about like our budget, like our little... I just interpret that financial finance from the budget. Oh. Like the secretary. We pay her. <laughs> oh, then we're on to. Uh... Well, I just, uh, Joe, were you oh. able to answer a couple of those questions from the attachments that were in our um, thing for the last meeting? There were a couple of things. Um, well, I think we have some new ones here. Okay. Today. Yeah. Oh. So. Well, I do. Well, I just wanted to make sure that um, and because she's doing a lot of work putting stuff in. I just want to make sure they're addressed just as public. So like, you want to do our public participation? Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah. So public participation is part of a meeting where anybody from the public who has any comments will be able to speak. Sir, uh, name for the record. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um so we had a discussion at the board selectman meeting about some of these issues with the community center, and I just want to share some thoughts. Um, first, this project doesn't really have a budget. 
the max the max cap for referendum was like four point seven million dollars. The bid came in at like three point eight million dollars. The bid was originally higher because it was going to be higher because of the basement, so it came in lower. But it's not like a budget, and I um, so I'm just and some people call it a budget, but that was the max approved, and so nobody has a spreadsheet as far as I know that says okay this is our budget for this project. And I had some questions at the board select meeting because I was wondering where's the nine hundred thousand dollars that's being spent above the bid, okay? And so Jason said, "Well, it's on the forms that go to USDA, sent in by the um, treasurer." So I requested those, and she gave them to me. And a lot of the items, most the things are on there. Like the builders' bids are on there. The um, the uh, attorney's fees bids, the bill, uh, invoices are on there, a small electrical thing, but like all of the all of the uh, the furniture, furniture, the gym equipment, those furnishings and things are not in there. So I, I still don't know where the budget is for any of those items or how they're being spent. And my concern was that is are they being bid? Like are these items are we following the town bid process and who's keeping track of it? They're not they're not going to USDA on those sheets. And then the other thing I learned. Which you, you guys probably know, but my thoughts are this: the um, builder is do is putting in the water line. It's in his, it's in their um, bid. You know how much they're supposed to bid for this, and they haven't been paid yet. But they're getting um, 150,000 for labor, 220 for materials, road repair. It's a total of 400,000 dollars is what the builder is getting paid as part of the bid for the water line. However, the board selectmen the other night were presented with a contract from Connecticut Water. And Connecticut Water is charging the town $140. It's going to be $325,000. That's the estimate. That's not included in the builder's part. This is extra money that the town has to pay Connecticut Water, $325,000. And $147,574 is being paid up front. And then um, the balancing is going to be paid upon completion. So this, this water line is actually costing the town $725,000. Some of it is being absorbed in the bid, and some of it is being paid directly to Connecticut Water. So I, I'm still like sitting here going, like, where's the? Okay, we have it's nine hundred thousand dollars above the bid, and we got three hundred twenty-five thousand that's going for the water, and then we have the all the the changes that you guys are putting in, including a lot of money for the foundation changes, and then no idea how much money is being spent on furniture, no idea how much money is being spent on gym equipment. Uh, any of those items are like, you know, I'm in the dark. You guys might be in the dark. I don't know. And um, it's just that it would be great if they have, I'm going to go back and ask, like, where's the list of all these expenses? The USDA, as far as I can tell, is reviewing those other expenses. It's not going into them. So they're not reviewing that. So um, anyway, the concern is for me is bidding. It's not the concern about how much we're spending necessarily because we got to pay Connecticut water. We got to pay for furnishings. We got to pay for gym equipment and what other oh kitchen equipment like are we taking it from the old building or are we buying new kitchen equipment that kind of stuff so i'm not concerned about i'm, I'm, I'm focusing on bidding because everything's got to be bid out we have uh requirements in town so if we're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars on furniture it's got to be bid um so that's my concern right now and i'm going to keep i want to keep digging until i find out like if this stuff's going to be bid. I, I don't think anyone is doing anything nefarious or doing anything wrong but and, and, and again, we don't have a budget. And I think what's going to happen is it's going to go above $4.7 million. And then the town's going to be um, having to pay for it because you can't have a project that's not completed. And I know Lori has something on some additional money that is not in the, in the money, the 4.7, but I'll leave it up to her to talk about that. Okay, thank you, Keith. Um, anybody else? I um, made two copies. Oh, name for the record, please. Sorry. Lori DeRoser, 101 Reservoir Avenue in Broadbrook, Connecticut. So I have some information there. I'm not sure what you have, and I know there's limitations on what you can do, but I figured the more information you have, the better you can do your job. So I did an Excel spreadsheet that has the budget and funding numbers, the CDF grant application versus the monthly project. So you can see how things change over time. And then I, I have the monthly project report. Unfortunately, this is this date is like three months old. When you figure they have a month to do the, the, the data, and then when the and it's almost a month old because they're due to do another one. And then by the time they submit the invoice, it's early. So it's like three months old, that data. 
Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, also, I want to point out that $150,000 that was previously allocated in two different grants is not on there. So I don't know where the $150,000 went, why it isn't on there as a funding source, but I wanted to point that out. So there's a two-page cost estimate following that, and that's from the CDS grant application. So that has a breakout of how they came up to $4.72 million. And it indicates the waterline installation costs were estimated to be $150,000. And it says $420,000 in contingency. And those costs were based on a building that had a basement. Um, and then following that, we they didn't get any money from the Community Investment Fund grant application, but that's the application. It also indicates there's $150,000 was previously set aside to pay for the water line. Uh, following that, there's four pages of BRB's invoice. This is only through 731. So this is very old. But if you look at that invoice, actually Keith said 400,000, but if you add up all the items under there, the water, water main and services section is a half a million dollars uh, as of the scheduled value. Uh, and I copied the last page of the report so you could just see it matches the project. Um, <laughs> that, that invoice includes only seven changes. I don't know what you have after that, but it's a, a moment in time. So, um, and then following that, I have a page from the Community Center RFP, and it states install new water made with hydrants from Route 5 to the east side of the property. So that was supposed to be included in the bid. And then I had an email questioning costs, and I was told the general contractor's the calculation of the water main, which was included in the bid package. So imagine my surprise when we have 325,000 that apparently is included. So my questions, uh, so is the 325, Thousand is that supposed to be included in the bid, or are we paying it, and then that'll be BRD's invoice will be reduced by that because maybe Connecticut Water has a requirement that the town has to sign that contract, and if so, I'd like to see their invoice the schedule to be adjusted for that three hundred twenty-five thousand, so we're not paying twice. Also, what happened to the hundred fifty thousand that was supposedly set aside for this? but somehow disappeared and it's not under that. If you look at um, the budget report, it has the two point, uh, has the CDS grant and it has the art of funds, the 924,000. And then it has the money that was uh, set aside from a previous year's budget. It does not have $150,000 as a funding source. And, uh, and then also most importantly, like he said, what are the current budget numbers? Because that's back three months. And I know this isn't necessarily your thing, but if you uh, look at the change orders, I think you should be aware of any particular point of time where we are with respect to the 4.72 or the 4.72 minus 150 dollars. So thank you. I appreciate your work and I appreciate that you know you're trying to build a center and do it right. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, do you want to elaborate on that water line at all? I don't know where $300,000, the water line is included in the project. It's a half a million dollars to do the project. <laughs> There's a permit fee that we had to give Connecticut Water for their work. So another check for $300,000 is going to be written. It's all through the builder. I just got to respond. We we uh, we were asked to sign a contract with Connecticut Water to pay them one hundred forty seven thousand dollars. Yes, I'm going to send you a copy of the contract. The contract says at the completion of the project, the town is going to pay the balance up to three hundred twenty five thousand dollars. No, that's incorrect. We said it right here. It's in the it's, that's their estimated cost. Uh, oh, okay, here here, and this is I'll say name for record, Len, Len Norton. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
And I'm not going to get into a that, that was a surprise. back and forth. I'm going to tell you, that was a surprise, right? We have never installed a water main before. And when I got that, I looked at it and I said, okay, the contractor must be paying this. And the contractor said, we're not paying that. I went through three different iterations of people at the water company trying to figure out what the hell the $147,000 was. So basically what they said was, and, and even the contractor who's going to do the job said, we never know what that number is when we bid the job. Because like, if we were developers and we were doing a subdivision, we would pay that, that as the developer and owner of the subdivision thing. It wouldn't be part of the of the uh, water main person's contract because you don't know what it is. What the water company does, they estimate the job of, of installing the water main, which was the three, 325 or something, right? Is that 325? 325, right. So they estimated it to be 320, 325 or use the other contractor's estimate of 325, anyhow. So somehow in their infinite wisdom, they take that 325 and then they estimate what their costs are going to be to install the water main. Now, if you look on that contract, Keith, I think it's on the, I don't know if it's on the front or the back, but did you see that listing of items that they're labor and all that stuff? Did you notice the, the cost for overhead was 80 something thousand dollars in contingencies? I said, what? Are you serious? I and mean, they're like, well, you know, we don't know. It's, it's a number we come up with. So what happens is the town, before they will start, the developer or town, as it is in this case, has to pay the Connecticut Water Company a check for 100, whatever that was, 147 and change. And then at the end of the project, what they do is, I was told at a, at a at the pre-construction meeting for the water line uh, construction, that the contingency shouldn't be really needed unless they hit rock or some crazy, and, and, and it's not the contractor's contingency, it's that they would have to spend more time trying to figure out what to do with it. The overhead is just ridiculous. I mean, that's, but it's theirs. It's the water company stuff. So we don't, we really don't have any control on, over that. It, so it's part of the project, but it's, we kind of have to pay that. It's almost like a permit fee. Okay. I guess it's the best way to, to think of it. Now they're going to put their time. I was told at the meeting that, they would try to donate some some of their labor and time as to, you know to try and keep the cost down to the town, so we could get a decent rebate back at, at the end of the installation. But um, that three twenty five, however, I do not believe includes that road is not that old. So once the water main is done in the spring, they're going to mill that road to the center line and repave it all the way down. So so we have a nice road back again instead of a a patch. Um, but that's that's where that number comes from. It, it's, that was like, what the hell is this? That's a, that's the for first time heard a really good explanation. And I appreciate that, like, because you just explained it and that's consistent with what it says. It's not inconsistent with what I was saying, but we're just bringing it to their attention. So I appreciate it because you just gave the right, um, perfect oh, in my eyes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so what is BRD's scope then? So the, What's, the, what's BRD's scope with respect to the water main? Their their scope is install the water they, main. They, well, they hired us a water main. They sub it out, yeah. Oh, okay. Their, yeah. their responsibility was not anything that we had to give Connecticut Water for their inspector to be there. And that's what it basically covers. Their inspector to be there, the chlorination of the line, the pressure test of the line. So, it, you know, and, and it's an estimate on their past experience that, 2,000 feet of water line, well, it could have cost us up to this. So we'd rather ask you for it now, and then we'll just give you money back later. Okay. They're worse than the power company. Okay. Yes. <laughs> How's that? I yeah. just, uh, well, I that contract, I called everybody I knew the water company yeah. and, and trying to figure out what it, I didn't really understand that after my first conversation. Yeah. Because you, I mean, I was like, what? what? 
Yeah. It, it, it was three or four different people I had to talk to to actually figure out. I mean, they do this every day. That's my first water main. Uh, yeah. and, um, I'm not going to tell you how old I am or how long I've been doing this, but Spring it's been a while. It's a little worse. And it's the first water main I'm, I'm responsible for it. They were the wood when he started the water main. Okay. But it's 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 just the way it is. And BRD put that in their contract, the water main installation, whatever they estimated it to be. And they had a their site contractor was going to do it. He was not approved by Kennedy Water okay. Company. So they had to go out and find a company, even though he told us he was. So they had to go out and find it. It, it hasn't been a real fun couple of weeks, believe no, me. It doesn't sound because like you want to get this in the ground before the snow flies mm. and trying to get a contractor lined up, someone that could come in and do the job. And had to have a price that would be okay with BRD because they've already bid. It's yeah. in their bid what, what they were planning to pay for it. Okay. So they got a reputable contractor approved by Connecticut Water Company. And uh, it's all we are. I think the part that's not as confusing is that it's the town paying the money versus it being BRD. Exactly. In yeah. the thing. And I think oh, I will for days trying that to get this the, BRD the confusing paid part of the whole thing. Seven dollars. Yeah. And you know they finally want to wait a water the company the after three or four days. Like, no, no, that's you. Yeah. You don't write the check. You just get the water. No. Good. Exactly. They hold you hostage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's... <laughs> the lady in back has a question. I know. Look, anybody online would like to speak? Hi, Norning Farmer, 247 South Water Street, just because of the conversation you just had. Um, I work for someone who does commercial development, and as a developer, water companies are his, are notorious for, if you want something to get water to where you got to get to, you're paying us up front, and we're going to figure it out later, <laughs> because that's how it works. We don't know what it's going to be. We don't know. The town probably never experiences it because they don't run water lines or water mains, a main, but that's how it is. Um, there's a lot of people when you're building infrastructure that's underground, utilities and whatnot, they kind of let, they, there's some wriggle room. Water companies and sewer, sewer entities in towns, you're paying us up front and it's a floating number. And when we get there, we get there. So just from a perspective of, that's what it is. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's one of those things. You want water? Guess what? <laughs> this is how you're going to do it. So it's just from my personal experience in dealing with construction projects that require infrastructure improvements. Thank you, Noreen. Um, so I, I guess I have a question on all this. If according to the bid, they were responsible for all the charges. What is what were the assumptions that the other companies that bid had that they would have to pay everything, including this now three hundred twenty five thousand versus the assumption that BRD made? No, oh, the the three the three hundred and the three hundred and twenty five thousand was the estimate for the water main installation. The only fee that no one knew about was the hundred and forty seven and change. The three twenty five is, I believe, what BRD carried for the installation of the water main, be it from their subcontractor gave them the number, I'm assuming, the guy that they used to have gave them the number of 325 or 350 to put the water main in. But that didn't include the paving and the restoration. No, it didn't include yeah, the, the paving, paving and the restoration. So the installation of just drop the pipe in, backfill it, run it here. That so was their cost. Are we going to pay BRD 500000 plus this other? We have to pay the permit. The, the, the only thing, yes, we're gonna we're gonna pay them whatever it was on their contract. Five hundred thousand, say whatever, for the installation of the water. We're gonna pay them that, and we're, we're we've already, I think, yeah, we've already written the check for the one forty seven and change, and went to the water company because they weren't gonna put a shovel in the ground or send anybody out there until they got paid. Um, so we we paid the one forty seven whatever. Now, at the end of the water main installation, whatever's left in there, like that contingency, which was a good sized number, they shouldn't really use much of that. We should get most of that, if not all of that, back. The overhead and profit, I'm not quite sure how I I I I I don't know. But do you think any other contractor that bid on this 
Nobody would have known that number. Assumed that they were going to pay that. No, because nobody knows that number. Nobody knew that number. That number came up last Friday or last week. That's the water company comes up with that number once you make application to put the water, actually put the water main in with them. They come up with that contract that Keith is talking about, and then they go through their set of charges. Like when I was complaining about it, I even called the contractor that BRD hired to put the water main in. I said, you must be paying this. And he's like, oh, no, we don't pay that. We had, we had no idea what that is. These people, that's what they do for a living. They put in gas mains and water mains. And they said, we never know what that number is. No one knows what that number is until the contract goes to the developer, whoever's responsible, the water company figures it out. And then they hand you this, you know, send this back sign with a check for this much. So I guess when the bids say- This is gonna be paid by, by us regardless. We just didn't know about it. So the bid stating that they were responsible for paying everything was not right then. Well, they were responsible for paying everything they knew about. Very much. So. Very well. You know what I'm saying? This is this is an unknown. It, this was something no one knew. About. So it sounds like the bidders would have just bid the work. Yeah, correct. Right. They, they, they put water means all the time. They know yeah, they're not the gonna gonna come across and they're not they're gonna they're not gonna be able to guess that. The town's gonna be up to you guys That's to guess it. Fee. Yeah. The town we didn't know that we had to pay that. Yeah, experience and have and having to do this. We didn't know that that's an amount that's going to come yeah. up. But we're doing more water mains next year, and I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be a step up. So, <laughs> so this will come Stats. out from the difference that's... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we need to put it in and sell it to them. You want to buy our water main? No, no. Okay. So once we're all done, they get the water main. Yeah, I know. That's their bonus. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's but you can reimburse if somebody else ties into it on a way. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Front just all about that. You pay for them. Yeah. Time the legislature gets on. It's right there, right side of me, Mr. Easy. I put right here. Why didn't hear a little peep out of them? After 10 years, you don't get nothing back. Public utility. Well, someone is tying into it right away. All right, so you'll get reimbursed. So, yeah. so and Connecticut Water decides on that. So, just to answer the question that has been asked a couple of times, the, the balance of the money between the contract for BRD and the leftover to the uh, force 0.7, whatever it is. That number that's fluctuating because there's so many other things that are moving. But if something, but if something needs to be bid out, well, how is that being to, addressed? To just answer to, that question, is any purchases we have to follow our town purchase policy? Okay. Purchase policy is anything over five thousand dollars needs three prices. Anything over twenty thousand dollars needs to be off the state bid, source well, fraud. Or put out the bid. Okay. So nothing, nothing no, that they have to be state, you know, like a state contractor, like right. the person we use for the roll of furniture is a state contractor. Right. I, I got one question on that roof, and how come we only got one bid from off that state bid? We pulled it up the because that contractor was available. He's worked in town and he's in South Windsor. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was down the southern part of the state and wanted to travel. So didn't you got more than one bid. Time. Oh, you got more than one yeah. bid. Oh. Even though it was a, we didn't have to because it is a state yeah. contractor, what we did. Okay. Yeah, they're vetted. All right. Very good conversation. Oh, we have to follow our bid policy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're down to adjournment. Um, anything I'm going to for adjournment? I'll make one. Oh. Move to adjourn. I'll second. Wait a minute, I'm adjourn. Second. All the favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned at okay. like 733. <laughs>